Welcome back everybody, how you doing tonight? So, I've, I did break down and open one another one of the mystery booster boxes and I'll probably post that video tomorrow night or the night after. But I got this in the mail today and I'm really kind of excited to get into it. It's an Invasion Tournament Pack. Uh, this one's, this set's pretty kind of cool because of the fact that I, uh, I don't know if you've watched some of my other videos, but I talk about how I, uh, I started at Revised, but then I quit after Homelands for a little while. And I came back at Invasion. So Invasion was the set that I kind of returned to the game in. And things were quite a bit different than when I left at the time. <laughs> so Invasion was a pretty cool set. It's kind of a really underrated set, I think, because uh, it's not a terribly popular set, but it was a it was a cool set. There was a lot of cool stuff in it. So anyway, just they concentrated a little too much on the Kabus probably, but who knows. It looks like there's not a pull tab on here. It looks like there's a spot for a pull tab, but I don't know if the pull tab actually got installed on this one. I don't feel it. So, I may have to, uh, I can't find it here in a second. Yep, looks like we're going to have to break out some weaponry. Alright, let's, uh, get in here and see what we get. So, not a, not a ton of value in this set, but there is some value in here. And the surprising thing is, the second most valuable card in the set is an uncommon, the Aura Shards. This is the original, uh, printing of the ore shards and there's some uh, valuable commons and of course these old sets uh, let me see is it on here somewhere no, i don't see the odds it's probably on here where is it yeah there we go so premium card odds approximately one in a hundred cards and this is only a 75 card deck so there's a possibility we'll get a foil in here but it's not guaranteed uh but then i've seen people have multiple foils in these as well so who knows? <laughs> uh, I got this one pretty good deal on uh, on eBay. I was watching it for a while because I wanted to get some old invasion cars and open them. So let's take a little trip down memory lane. Uh, it's going to be a little shorter video because it's just one tournament pack, but we're uh, going to go through every card. Just kind of look because uh, any foil is worth money in this set and a lot of the uncommons are worth some money and you know most of the rares are worth a little bit so here's our basic lands got old boreal lands that's a cool island there i like that one it's a cool swamp actually it looks like a swamp a lot of the new swamps don't even look like swamps anymore so let's kind of go through here here's our basic lands now right after the basic lands is where we're going to get our rares uh there should be three rares right after the basic lands and the foils can be anywhere literally anywhere in these tournament packs Oh, oh, I think I see a foil right there, as a matter of fact. Right at the end of our lands. Is it a rare one or is it... Oh, it's a common foil. Okay. I think the rare will be right after that. It's a zap. So we got a zap common foil here. And I think the next card... Yep, there's our rares. Okay, so we're going to take these three. We're going to put them down here. Oh, we'll keep the foil out here. I want to save the, the best for last there. So we did get a foil. That's nice. It's just a common uh rare foils are very hard to get this set just turned 20 years old so that's pretty cool it's a pretty old set let's uh start going through the commons first here so we got the land of war elite uh there was a common land cycle in here the this is the sulfur vent they didn't go over very well because they came into play tapped i really wish wizards would stop doing that if this land didn't come into play tap, these would have been really popular lands because you can tap them for your main color or you can sacrifice them to add two different colors to your mana pool. So really cool for like, you know, multicolor combinations, like three or more colors in a deck. Would have been really awesome if they didn't come into play tapped. They would have been really handy. Uh, Dismantling Blow. This was a uh, kicker was popular back then and doing kickers in different colors from your main color because Invasion was... Kind of one of the earlier sets where they started kind of blending the colors together and, and creating more dual color stuff. Uh, Kabu Scout. Uh, obviously, Legends was the first set that did multicolor with the with the actual original uh, Elder Dragon Legends. But uh, there really still was kind of a little bit of teasing with different colors. But Invasion is when they kind of started ramping that up a little. Uh, Worldly Council. We got an Aggressive Urge. I haven't seen these cards in so long. <laughs> Fire Screamer. So you got a black card with fire breathing. Kind of cool. But it's got the one red to go on plus one until end of turn. Um, Caption Unicorn. 
Rogue Kavu. Kavus were like the big thing in this block. They were kind of the, the main creature type that was uh, really popular at the time. Got an Agonizing Demise. Again, black car with a red kicker. Uh, there's our non-fall zap we got. <laughs> Fairy Squadron. Cool little card because I... It could just be early game, one mana one drop, or you could play the, the kicker late game, and it come into play as a 3-3 flyer. So, kind of neat how they did stuff like that back then. Kabu Climber, Duskwalker, Glimmering Angel, Travel Flames, Shoreline Rider. Now we're getting into our uncommons. So, the uncommon, there's more commons after the uncommons too. Uh, we don't get twice as many uncommons as commons, unfortunately. Uh, Sterling Grove. Now, remember, we're looking for that one in particular, actually. That is, a, <laughs> uh, according to the price list I'm looking at, that's like a $11, $12 card right there. So, that's an uncommon that's worth a lot of money. Uh, all other enchantments you control can't be the targets of spells or abilities. That would come in really handy in today's kind of genre here. And it's funny that it's green and white, which is what the main enchantment decks are based around now. Uh, you can pay one to sacrifice it, search your library for an enchantment card, and reveal that card, shuffle your library, and then put that card on top of it. So, pretty awesome card. Um, oh, look at that. We got a Tangle as our second card. That is another valuable card. That one's about $2.40, according to this price list. Uh, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Attacking creatures don't untap during their next, con their, during their controller's next untap step. Uh, Urborg Shambler. So, we got a couple, couple good uncommon hits in here already. An Urborg Shambler. We got a Tiger Eye Cameo. So these cameos were pretty popular at the time. Um, they're not too bad now. They're basically a dual land artifact that costs three. Um, not too bad. A little, little pricey. If there were two for a dual land artifact, I think they'd be run quite a bit. But who knows? Uh, Binding Light. And we got a Xanamjin. So, Ordered Migration, we got an Alloy Golem, a Solem Gin, there's a lot of gins in here, I believe there's a gin for each color in this set, Samoon, this was pretty handy back in the day, I used to run this in uh, some of my red, red and green decks, it deals one damage to each creature target opponent controls and it's only a two drop, so that Board wipes all those white weenie decks. <laughs> uh, and it would be pretty effective against mono red right now. All those cavalcade decks with the little one ones coming at you. So there's our uncommons. We did get two two uh, good value cars in there. We did not get the aura shards, which is disappointing. But we did get the second most expensive uncommon. Um, which paid for a third of the uh, pack. So all we need now is uh, a couple decent rare hits. And we might pay for the pack. I did not see a black rare, so I don't think we're getting the friction altar. That's the most expensive card at uh, about 30 bucks. Phantasmal Terrain. Tranquility. Bog Initiate. This guy was real fun. There were some cool combos with this one because uh, you can tap a colorless to add black to your mana pool. We used to, uh, you know, ramp up with green and then use a bunch of elves to create a bunch of mana, green mana that we'd filter through this guy for drain lifes back in the day. Uh, Restrain. Scarred Puma, Voldalian Merchant, good old Mirefault back in the day, and then Wandering Stream, Kavu Aggressor, Tidal Visionary, Wings of Hope, Frixian Reaper, not the Frixian Altar, unfortunately, Crimson Acolyte, Armadillo Cloak. This one would have been fun if it had been in like red and green, but green and white was a little too flat. And then Repulse, return target creature to its owner's hand and draw a card. There was a lot of stuff in this set that, uh, you know, the it was like a normal kind of card, like an Unsummon, but a little bit more, and you get something like a card draw. So there's a lot of cards that were pretty multi-purpose that, that did a good job in this set. They uh, they really kind of spent some time designing these cards back then. These were uh, these sets came out every few months back then, uh, but they didn't have a million other things going on like challenger decks and commander decks and and mystery booster boxes and secret layers popping every other three days but and keep jumping up in price all right so let's see what our rares are here first rare is 
A well laid plan. So this one is a this one's a pretty decent card. Uh, did it did it hit on the price list? I thought I saw it on here, but I'm not seeing it right now. So that means it's below a buck fifty because I I don't see it on the price list. But prevent all comment or prevent all damage that would be dealt to a creature by another creature if they share a color. Seems like it's kind of eh, hit or miss, but you gotta remember there was uh there were some cards in this set that would change the colors of your opponent's creatures. You could actually target creatures and change the colors. So with this out, uh, you could have a little fun with it. Uh Metathron Aerostat. I'm pretty sure he's not worth much of anything. Just two two flyer. Now it does have a really cool ability. You can cheat cards into play pretty easily. You can uh, pay X plus one blue. You may put a creature card with converted mana cost X from your hand into play. If you do return this to, your, to its owner's hand. So you could cheat cards into play. You could play cards that were in uh, different creatures that were in different colors that you don't have mana for or something. Yeah, I don't know. There's probably some, some combos with it, but I don't know if anybody really did much with it. That's why it's not worth much. And Overabundance is our last rare. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, that player adds one additional mana to his or her mana pool, the same type, and Overabundance deals one damage to him or her. So, paying for your greed there. Gotta pay for the greed. So, I don't think any of those are uh, on the price list, but it's kind of cool to go through these older sets and just kind of see some of the stuff that was in there and see some of the artwork. The artwork was totally different back then than it is now. And if you look at some of this, these were... These were all real pieces of art that were hand-drawn. They were actually on a canvas, and then... See if I can get it focused. There we go. So you can see there's a lot of detail in the artwork back then. And it wasn't just uh, computer-animated graphics or anything, you know? It was real real art, real people drawing real art. And uh, there's some really cool stuff in there, like trees turning into people. And what we got here? We got a... Uh, we got, what is that? A, <laughs> it's like a grasshopper that's got some kind of magical ability or something. So, <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff. It's all hand-drawn back then. No, no computer animation, really. Just hand-drawn, actual, real art. So if you look at the art, it's kind of wild on these old ones. Plus, it's got the old-school border on it, which is fun. So, yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this set. I know it's not terribly popular, but there was some really good cards in the set. And at the time, it was a really fun set to play with. So, and this is the one that, like I said, I got back into after I took my first hiatus. And then I quit again around Lorwyn, sold my collection. And now I'm kicking myself because I had a huge collection. It will be worth a lot of money right now. So, anyways, let me know what you guys think of this set. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And hopefully you'll check out a couple more. There's probably some suggestions up here in the corners. Stick around, check out a couple others, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Take care.